students and uh, myself dr jyoti associate professor in botany government college sir under the aegis of director general higher education for undergraduate botany classes today i will teach you double fertilization what is double fertilization double fertilization is the phenomenon in which two may two sperms fertilize two different component of embryo sac simultaneously that is two sperms or two male gametes are there and out of these one male gamete fuses with the female gamete in the embryo sac and this fusion is called as syngamy and the other male gamete or sperm fuses with the two polar nuclei which are present in the central cell of the embryo sac and this fusion is called as triple fusion and syngamy and triple fusion both constitute double fertilization this phenomenon is unique in angiosperms and it was first demonstrated by navashan in fritillaria and lilium then what is fertilization as there as i am saying the fusion of the male and female gamete take place and it produces zygote zygote is produced within the embryo sac in angiosperm male gametes are carried to the egg or female gamete by a pollen tube this process is called as syphnogamy then what are what is the process of fertilization it involves germination of pollen grain on receptive stigma recognition and rejection reaction occurs between compatible and incompatible pollen grains then is what is the structure of pollen grain pollen grain is this is the structure of a pollen grain and this is the binucleate pollen grain and it has outer axine ball layer and inner is in time this is tube nucleus and generative nucleus is present this is binucleate pollen grain mostly pollen grains when are released at the binucleate and some cases trinucleate pollen grains are also released and this pollen grain when germinate it in time protrudes out or in time comes out in the form of pollen tube and whole content of the pollen grain cytoplasm generative nucleus and the tube nucleus migrates and these or the generative nucleus may divide into two sperm nuclei or the two male gametes as i i am also telling you the structure of as the axine is mainly composed of sporopollenin this is the major component and on the axine cavities are present which are filled with specific proteins mainly glycoproteins some enzymes lipids and certain allergens which are derived from the anther tapetum during sporogenesis jab sporogenesis hoti hai to anther mein jo tapetal wall layer hai wo ye proteins lipids aur allergens axine ko supply karte hai and these chemicals are mainly as are derived from the tapetum so these they carry some specific sporophytic recognition factor however the entire layer on the other hand it consists of proteins and polysaccharides of haploid spores so the chemicals 
in this in entine are therefore gametophytic in origin when the pollen grain lands on stigma the stigma uh, there is recognition rejection reaction between the stigma and the chemicals which are present on the stigma and on the pollen grain they recognize on the stigma stigma contains uh, two type uh, the uh, uh, enzymes also and first of before i uh, first of all I, I will discuss the growth of the pollen tube as a pollen tube grows then whole content of the pollen grain that is cytoplasm vegetative nucleus and the sperm cells or the generative nucleus migrate into the pollen tube and these structures are localized at the apical region or the at the apex at the extreme tip of the growing pollen tube a hemispherical transparent area is present which is called as cap block and this cap block disappears as the growth of the pollen tube ceases jab pollen tube ki growth ruk jati hai to ye transparent area jo cap block hai wo dikhna band ho jata hai and as the pollen tube grows most of the cytoplasm and nuclei they are confined or they occur at the apical region of the pollen tube and behind this apical region there is formation of callous plug and a large vacuole fill the grain and older region of the tube so jaise hi pollen grain pollen tube ki growth hoti hai apical region par hi cytoplasm aur generative nucleus aur uh, uh, vegetative nucleus ya sperm cells sperm cell vegetative nucleus apna tip region par hi rehte hain usse piche ka region callous plug se block ho jata hai ya vacuoles fill kar dete hain older region of the tube and initially the growth of the pollen tube occurs at the expense of energy and food material which is stored in the pollen grain after that it dries nourishment from the transmitting tissue or from of the styler canal as a pollen grain germinate or lands on the stigma there is interactive reaction occurs that is recognition reaction occurs on the stigma first of all there are two types of stigma dry stigma and wet stigma on the stigmatic surface some papilla are present and plasma lemma of stigma is covered outside by pectocellulosic layer which is discontinuously cutinized and the in case of dry stigma there is copious exudate is not secreted but papilla bear a hydrated proteinaceous covering over the cuticle which is called as pellicle that is again i am repeating dry stigma doesn't produce copious exudate but the papilla bear a hydrated proteinaceous covering over the cuticle called pellicle and most of the plants possess dry stigma on the other hand on wet stigma a copious exudate is present this is present on the stigmatic sur surface and it contains lipids some phenolic compounds proteins carbohydrates uh, carbohydrates in the free floating secretion 
amino acids are also present and as these chemicals which are present on dry st uh, stigma are dry or wet stigma these chemicals are sporophytic in origin so there is interaction between the chemicals of pollen grains and those present on the surface of stigma these interaction will determine whether the pollen grain will germinate or not if the pollen grains are compatible or there is a compatibility between the pollen grain and stigmatic surface then pollen grain will germinate and if there is not compatibility then rejection reaction will take place and pollen grain will not germinate in most of the angiospermic plants they possess a capability to inhibit germination of pollen grain and further growth of pollen tube to avoid inbreeding and help outbreeding this chemical control of an individual plant is called self incompatibility so in this that is jab pollen grain stigma par land karega to interactive reaction hogi uh, 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 recognition rejection reactions dono hongi agar pollen compatible hoga stigma bhi decide karega aur pollen ke chemicals bhi agar cam, uh, compatible hoga to pollen grain germinate karega stigma par nahi to nahi karega aur wo react refuse kar dega aur rejection reaction hogi then as it shown here the pollen grain is landing on the stick uh, this is pollination and the structure of the pollen to uh, stigmatic surface plasma lemma pectocellulosic wall layer after to pectocellulosic layer cuticle is present and cuticle after uh, outer to cuticle pellicle layer is present when the this is in case of dry stigma when pollen grains are compatible then it will germinate on the stigmatic surface so this is compatibility reaction and if pollen grains are not compatible when the rejection response occurs on the stigma then it develops callous plug this callous plug appears in the pectocellulosic layer of stigma just below the point of contact with the pollen and this reaction is highly localized that is if compatible incompatible pollen grain lands on stigma then only callous plug is formed and but it doesn't interfere with the germination of other compatible pollen lying on the stem stigma ye compatibility reaction rejection response bahut hi specific hai agar pollen grain compatible nahi hai to stigmatic surface pe claws plug ban jayega aur agar stigmatic uh, agar pollen grain compatible hai to same style uh, stigmatic surface pe wo germinate karega and callous plug is also formed at the tip of pollen tube just as at the point of its emergence from the pollen grain jaise hi pollen grain se pollen tube just bahar nikalti hai emerge karti hai usi point par bhi callous plug ban jata hai and in case of compatible pollen grain pollen tube emerges and releases enzyme cutinase which hydrolyzes the cuticle of dry stigma and pollen tube penetrates the stigma in wet stigma the cuticle is already ruptured during deposition of exudates 
and pollen tube grows into style by absorbing nutri nutrients from the styler canal one thing more the stigma which are present the dry stigma is mostly present in case of all the plants and wet stigma is limited and wet stigma uh, for example in dry stigma is present in cotton and wet stigma is present in uh, solanum nigrum vidania petunia etc then is this slide is showing pollen stigma interaction as the if pollen lands on a compatible stigma then what happens first of all pole on the stigmatic surface papillate outgrowth is there first of all pollen get captured then pollen adi, uh, pollen adhesion take place pollen adhere itself on the stigmatic surface pollen apne aap ko yahan pe attach karta hai then it absorbs it gets hydrated by absorbing nutrients from the stigmatic surface hydration of the pollen grain take place then it germinate pehle pollen capture hoga fir adhesion hogi then hydration will take place on the stigmatic surface and the germination of pollen grain will take place and pollen tube is produced when the pollen tube is produced then a number of pollen grain land on the stigmatic surface and all the pollen grain uh, pollen tubes will not reach up to the uh, embryo sac up to the female gamete in the embryo sac only one of the pollen tube which is carrying the male gametes two male gametes it will reach the embryo uh, female gamete in the embryo sac and pollen tube will pass through the style and it will reach up to the embryo sac and when the pollen grain reach uh, pollen grain land on stigma it germinate after that it reaches on the style and styles are of two, also of two types open style or hollow style and in this case styler canal is present and this styler canal is lined with glandular epidermis and this glandular epidermis produces mucilage and the due to uh, and the pollen grain absorb the uh, get hydrated and germinate uh, proceeds uh, makes its growth open style mein jaise pollen tube grow karegi style ki surface pe lining the styler canal mucilage is secreted which help in nutrition and conduction of the pollen tube and open styles are mostly present in monocots other is solid style in solid style there is a central strand of elongated special specialized cell central strand of elongated specialized cells called conducting tissue or transmitting tissue and this contains proteins glycoproteins acid phosphatases peroxidases and esterases also this uh, pollen tube grows down secreting some hydrolytic enzymes and it dissolves the middle lamella and this solid style is present mainly in dicots other is semi solid style or half closed style in this case transmitting tissue is limited or rudimentary and it is limited only to the one side of the styler canal it is not very common it is present in cactaceae 
In this above slide, here is this is the dark green structure is showing the transmitting tissue in solid style. And in the next slide, this is showing the styler canal that is in the open style styler canals are present. Then when the pollen one thing more when the pollen grain lands uh, after jump, first of all pollen grain land on stigma it germinate then when it reaches the style there also recognition rejection reactions take place the proteins which are released from the intine they are involved and the chemicals which are present in the on the style actually these chemicals which are physiological and biochemical changes in styler can, uh, canal also take place which are induced by embryo sac that is the chemicals produced by embryo sac they will control the physiological and biochemical changes in styler canal and recognition rejection reaction between the pollen tube and style uh, styler canal will take place in styler canal if incompatible pollen tubes are there then either the pollen tube degenerate or it growth may get arrested at different level growth ruk jayegi different levels pe usually the pollen tubes are able to grow two third of the style length and different rejection reactions occur because the activity that is sometimes highly activity of the higher activity of enzymes is produced which are responsible for the rejection of growth of the pollen tube sometimes pollen tube uh, in the pollen tube the outer wall disappears and the in, uh, inner uh, pollen tube ruptures and it swells and burst open in the styler region this occurs in case of petunia and in case of lilium pollen tube of incompatible pollen grain don't contain transfer cell and this transfer cell transfer cell helps to absorb pistil secretion for the growth of the pollen tubes but in case of compatible pollen tube transfer cells are present and they can absorb nutrients or secretion from the pistil for their growth other abnormal behavior of the pollen tubes in style are that is generative cell may divide may not divide or vegetative nucleus divides earlier or number of callous plug at the tip of pollen tube may increase and the pollen tube also show branched tips this rejection reaction is highly localized in styler canal also as because if incompatible pollen tubes are there then only this rejection response will take place and when the pollen tubes are compatible then this will not interfere with the growth of the pollen tube through the style pollen पॉलन ग्रेन्स लैंड करता है स्टिग्मा पे फिर स्टाइल पर जब पॉलन और जर्मिनेट करता है और पॉलन ट्यूब स्टाइल के ऊपर ग्रो करती है तो रिजेक्शन रिस्पॉन्स होता है ये भी बहुत लोकलाइज्ड है इनकम्पेटिबल पॉलन ट्यूब्स में ग्रोथ रुक जाएगी और कंपेटिबल पॉलन ट्यूब्स में ग्रोथ स्टाइल के थ्रू कॉन्टिन्यू रहेगी देन एज what is the path of pollen tube when the pollen tube passes uh, uh, first of all pollen grain land on stigma pollen tube is produced then it passes through the style and ultimately it reaches up to the embryo sac in embryo sac that is it may reach up to the embryo sac through three different ways 
either that is three ways are there porogamy chalazogamy or nizogamy in porogamy pollen tube reaches up to the embryo sac through micropylarent and this is the most common method in chalazogamy pollen tube reaches up to the embryo sac through the chalazolent and in mesogamy pollen tube makes its way laterally in between the chalazolent and the micropylarent most common method of uh, entry or path of the pollen tube in the embryo sac is through the micropyle that is porogamy then what is the structure of embryo sac embryo sac this is the structure of typical and uh, polygonum type of embryo sac it has two ends chalazolent and micropylarent on the chalazolent three antipodal cells are present and on the micropylarent two synergids and one egg cell is present synergids and egg cell constitute egg apparatus and the in the center large central cell is present which bears two polar nuclei the uh, uh, synergids synergids two synergids which are present in the embryo sac these uh, uh, one of the synergid degenerate at the time of entry of pollen tube and this synergid serves as a platform for the uh, uh, sperm cells or the for the content of the pollen tube and the filiform apparatus is present in the synergids and this is these are the finger like projections these fili function of these filiform apparatus is that it helps in shock absorber that is when the pollen tube reaches the uh, uh, micropylar end and it reaches up to the synergid then pollen tube burst that filiform apparatus shock absorb karta hai. so in the embryo sac it is typical polygonum type of embryo sac it is seven celled three antipodal cells one central cell and one egg cell and two synergids that is seven cell and it is eight nucleate three nuclei are of antipodals two polar nuclei one egg nucleus and two synergids that is it is eight cell structure the rejection reaction of the between the pollen grain pollen grain first of all it occurs at the stigmatic surface then it may occur at the styler canal and in some cases the rejection reaction also occurs at the time of syngamy that is when the fusion of the male gamete with the female gamete take place within the embryo sac or so as a result of rejection behavior the fusion of the male and female gamete doesn't take place so this is very specific phenomenon as the pollen first of all uh, only compatible pollen grain will land on stigma then it will germinate to produce the pollen tube and then this compatible pollen grain will pass through the style and up to ultimately only compatible pollen grain will release its contents and uh, fusion syngamy will occur in the embryo sac this is the slide which is showing the pollen grain this this is the compatible pollen grain which is landing on the stigma and has germinated pollen tube is produced and by its way through the style it has reached up to the embryo sac and 
as a pollen tube reaches up to the embryo sac it first of all pierces or it uh, the nucellus and then it enters the egg apparatus then the process of double fertilization take place what is as i have described double fertilization as it includes two phenomena one is syngamy and other is triple fusion in syngamy the fusion of the male gamete with the egg cell take place and in case of triple fusion fusion of the one of the male gamete with the two polar nuclei or the diploid nucleus take place and primary endosperm nucleus is formed which ultimately develops into endosperm and in angiosperm endosperm is diploid however in case of gymnosperm endosperm is haploid so in this slide is showing that is at the micropylon end sperm cells are released and one sperm cell is using with the egg cell to ensure uh, syngamy that is fusion of male gamete with the female gamete is taking place and other sperm cell fuses with the two polar nuclei which are present in the central cell of the embryo sac and primary endosperm nucleus is formed which is triploid structure which will form the endosperm finally there is a synchronization combination hai bahut zyada match karenge stages if fertile if uh, uh, syngamy take place then zygote is formed and zygote will which will ultimately develop into embryo if the growth of the embryo take place that is if the embryo grows fully grows or matures then only the endosperm primary endosperm nucleus the uh, growth of the primary endosperm nucleus into typical endosperm will continue otherwise if the zygote uh, doesn't develop properly into embryo then growth of the endosperm also gets suspended so what is the significance of double fertilization double fertilization it ensures survival of embryo by providing nutrition source of nutrition that is endosperm and endosperm not only provide nutrition to the developing embryo it also makes availability of nutrient to germinating seed until it establish itself into the young seedling if as there is synchronization between the growth of the embryo and the endosperm if fertilization fail or resultant cell aborts that is zygote to embryo the cell aborts at any stage then development in second fertilized cell or the primary endosperm nucleus to endosperm also gets suspended and so in this way there is no wastage of energy now first of all i will tell you some important questions what is the interaction between pollen pistil interaction in angiosperms and what is the biological significance of self incompatibility what is double fertilization what is the role of synergids and what is the role of filiform apparatus one important thing more which i have missed that is synergids also produce some chemicals to guide the pollen tube towards the embryo sac and this response this is phenomenon is called as chemotropic response and the and that is uh, under the guidance of the chemical secreted by synergids pollen tube will 
रीच अप टू द एम्ब्रियो सेक सम अदर सब्सटांसिस विच आर आल्सो हेल्पफुल इन गाइडिंग द पोलन ट्यूब ग्रोथ